This is part two of lecture three in the oral rehab class, continuing uh, to talk about the audiogram. And um, in part two and part three, we'll talk about um, the main categories of information available on an audiogram. In part two, in this uh, screencast, we're going to feature um, a discussion of degree of hearing loss. Uh, in part three, uh, we'll pick up and discuss the remaining uh, categories of information type, configuration, and symmetry. Degree of hearing loss uh, is a way to describe how much uh, there is. Um, and again, we could describe how much hearing loss there is or how much hearing a person has. Those are basically the two philosophical ways that we could consider um, what we're looking at on an audiogram. Uh, when we think about hearing loss, we tend to think about that as having more of a medical kind of connotation. When we think about how much residual hearing a person has, meaning how much, uh, you know, where do they begin to hear at what level, uh, that's really more more rehabilitative. And think about it for a second. Uh, in rehabilitative work, we have to work with what the person has. We have to fit the sounds of the world into their residual hearing, because that's what they're able to hear. And so everything that we do uh, from an amplification point in, um, in oral rehabilitation is to try to fit uh, sound into the person's range of residual hearing. That's the basic idea. And this whole idea of description of degree of loss, as we'll see as we go through the next couple slides, um, is a, a silly kind of exercise in trying to take words to describe numbers. You would think the numbers themselves would probably be uh, adequate, but uh, the uh, convention is also to describe these four categories, degree, type, configuration, and symmetry, also in words. All right, so if we look at uh, this notion of degree of hearing loss, I guess philosophically we could think about this as saying, well, is the glass half empty or is it half full? Uh, and, and again, the scientist, uh, the scientist in me would say, well, the glass is, this glass is full, it's just this part is air, and this part is whatever this fluid is down here. So, uh, so in fact, the glass is full, but that's just a, a scientific kind of thing. When we look at the audiogram, though, uh, if we look at this set of threshold findings, and just to, to be clear and to, to practice this a little bit, uh, what you see depicted here, these are blue Xs, uh, so that would be air conduction threshold results for the left ear. Uh, and you can see that there's a... Uh, audiometric finding of 35 at 250, uh, 40 at 500, 50 at 1,000, um, and so on. Um, so this would be the person's audiometric uh, threshold. Now, there's, there's two ways to think about this, uh, this particular finding. Number one is, sorry, slide five. Number, uh, first way to think, of, think about this is to interpret this uh, in sort of the more uh, sort of medical conventional way to think about it, which is degree of loss as loss. Uh, so if the person uh, on the audiogram doesn't hear until 35 decibels at 250, that means that they were unable to hear any of the sounds, any of the presentations at amplitudes less than 250. And so it goes for all of the others. At 500 hertz, the person didn't hear till 40. Well, that means they did not hear any of the presentations at lesser amplitudes than 40 decibels at that particular frequency. So when you look at this particular way of, of thinking about it, anything that's amplitudes that are less than the uh, threshold value in terms of less than the decibel value, less value, less decibels, we would say that's hearing loss. The person doesn't hear that. They lost it, I guess, in an adult sense, but they don't hear that. They start to hear at this particular, at their audiometric threshold line. From a rehabilitative point of view, uh, we could take this exact same threshold value and we say, well, the person began to hear at 35 decibels at 250. And the way that we hear, we hear all of the amplitudes that are greater than that. So the person is able to hear at starting at 35 decibels and then would have the capability of hearing every amplitude that would be greater. Same thing here, they start to hear at 40 decibels, at 500 hertz, they hear everything that's greater than that. So in this depiction, everything that would be at higher amplitudes than their threshold value, higher decibel values, would be what the person hears. This would be what we would describe as their residual hearing. This is their range of the sounds that they're in fact able to hear. Now the difference between um, this individual with their range of residual hearing and yours, I would suggest, and probably mine, is that if our, our values are down here somewhere, that would mean that we simply have much more residual hearing. So we would be able to hear 
all of this down here in contrast to the person depicted on the audiogram originally. So we would have a much wider dynamic range than the individual uh, depicted on the audiogram who would have a, uh, you know, a limited dynamic range. Note that for hearing, uh, the hearing threshold line is that the, the person is not able to hear the softer sounds. They do begin to hear at what would be considered to be moderate level sounds and they're able to hear everything, uh, all the amplitudes greater than that. So uh, if we had to use words now to describe uh, the various findings, uh, uh, the words would be sort of uh, normal or really within normal limits. Um, and then just a set of words that somehow denote uh, or suggest a, a cascade of severity. So typical words, and, and these are not the exclusively used words, but these are typical words, commonly used words, mild, moderate, it's this in-between word, moderate to severe, severe, profound. And these would all suggest as, uh, uh, by words, that these would be associated with um, uh, poor hearing levels because it would require greater amounts of amplitude for those to be detected. And there are some combination, uh, uh, mild to moderate, uh, severe to profound, so on, uh, that, uh, that are, are in conventional use also. So again, if we look at a table for these, uh, DB hearing, uh, DBHL refers to decibels of hearing uh, level, hearing loss. Um, and so again, uh, normal, or again, as I said in a moment ago, within normal limits would be uh, depicted as uh, you know, a result uh, of where a person could hear uh, any of the decibels less than 20 if they were a child, less than 25 if they were an adult. If a person didn't hear until it was in the in this range, we would uh, it would be characterized as a mild hearing loss. If they weren't able to hear until it was that range, 41 to 55, moderate, and so on. So the idea is, as the hearing levels. Um, get uh, higher required for threshold, then the severity of the condition gets, uh, gets worse. Here's just an audiogram kind of showing you in colors uh, where these different ranges would appear. Um, and again, remember that on the audiogram that the lower values here are the softer. And since it's a test of sensitivity, if you can respond uh, in the range of uh, zero to 25 or actually even better than zero. Minus 10 is actually better than zero. But uh, typically we'd say zero to 25, that would be the normal range. If it takes more amplitude than that for you to hear, then that would be in the range that we would start to think of that as being sort of in the hearing loss range. Now, there's a couple problems with using the uh, descriptors uh, for degree of hearing loss, this, degree, uh, this mild, moderate, severe, profound. Uh, there, there is a reading that I had available for you uh, that uh, you can look on Moodle. It should be there. It's got by an audiologist by the name of Dan Conkle. It's really not an, uh, an article as much as it's just kind of an opinion piece, but uh, it's, it's apt for our discussion right now. Uh, and so uh, a couple of points that Conkle makes, uh, first of which is the words that we use to describe degree are not universally or operationally agreed upon. There's no standard for this. Now, there's some standards for some things, but for this particular language, there's really no uh, standard. Now, most audiologists would not confuse uh, or have a visual impression of what uh, a mild hearing loss would be um, versus a severe hearing loss, but there might be some uh, sort of in-between audiograms where, you know, if I said, oh yeah, I, I saw a person today who had a, uh, a severe hearing loss, most audiologists I'd be talking to would understand what I mean. Bottom line is though, they're going to have the, the actual audiogram to look at and they'll be able to sort of, you know, put their own words on it if that's what they sort of need, it, need to do. And most audiograms by convention uh, will provide words for degree type configuration symmetry just as part of the uh, interpretation and write-up. And again, there's conventional agreement on these things, but there's no standard for it. So there's a little bit of, of, uh, of flux, shall we say. Uh, the other problem uh, with the degree of loss uh, is the idea that um, uh, that the words to describe degree of loss is that results typically cross categories. The only time in which uh, the uh, uh, one one word would describe a person's hearing uh, degree of loss would be if their audiometric um, contour would be what we call flat, which their audiometric con configuration was flat, meaning as we went across frequency, there was no difference. That's not exactly flat, is it? But, but the point is, as we see on the next slide, is that commonly 
um, audiograms, audiometric uh, results, cross categories. Now on this upper graph that you see in this upper audiogram, uh, and I use green here just to show I'm not meaning right or left, I'm just trying to show you a generic audiogram. Uh, this is a person that has uh, hearing basically, if we say this is an adult, uh, hearing within normal limits through 20 decibels at 2000 hertz with a mild hearing loss above that. So we would, in words, say uh, this upper audiogram would be hearing within normal limits through 2000 hertz with a mild higher frequency hearing loss. The lower audiogram uh, is sort of uh, showing us the same thing but with a much uh, uh, sharper descent into hearing loss. And in fact, uh, this lower audiogram runs from within normal limits here in the very low frequencies to profound hearing loss in the very higher frequencies. So. Uh, and, and this lower audiogram here is not an uncommon looking audiogram. So uh, we're left with the absurd kind of uh, verbal uh, position to say, well, this person has hearing within normal limits in the lower frequencies to profound hearing loss in the higher frequencies. So it's kind of silly, but that's generally the way uh, that um, we deal with it. Third problem with um, degree of loss is that um, there's not a necessary relationship between degree of loss and the extent of a problems that a person has. So in an individual, I would like to think that as hearing loss uh, gets uh, more advanced, that it, as degree, degree of loss is, is poorer, it should uh, indicate to me sort of logically that they're gonna have more problems. On average, this, this turns out to be true. However, we've already learned here that uh, we can't predict this in an individual. We've already talked about that it's very heterogeneous and it's very possible that someone may not have pro hearing problems even given significant hearing loss. Um, a little study that I did uh, a couple years ago, analysis of uh, 4,500 uh, people, uh, looked at um, a, rela a relationship between the degree of hearing loss um, using average audiometric findings of, uh, and then sort of, you know, average for individuals and average across these 4,500 people and compared that to their perception of their hearing problems using something that actually SCOW and Nurbon developed called the SAC or the Self-Assessment of Communication. Uh, when we look at the data on average, what we see uh, essentially is that um, as um, the, the SAC score goes across the page, we align the labels so that they align with generally with the audiometric label. So normal, mild, moderate, severe, profound. This is their problems on uh, the self-assessment of communication. And then if we look down the rows, again, it aligns uh, with the typical audiometric labels, normal, mild, moderate, severe, profound, using... Um, uh, a, um, an average of three test frequencies, 500, 1,000, 2,000. Generally, what we'd like to see is that what we'd expect, if there was a relationship, is that there'd be some diagonal here that would say, okay, uh, as hearing loss gets uh, poorer, their uh, problems seem to increase. And on general, that seems to be okay. The people in the corner, though, uh, these people here are saying that even with normal hearing, they've got profound set of problems. Uh, down over in this corner, these, uh, not so much this corner, but the, you know, these folks over here, these are people with profound hearing loss, but yet they're saying they really don't have too many problems. So again, there's some evidence there of the, uh, of the heterogeneity. So uh, these folks up in here, possibly uh, overestimating their problems. These people down over here, possibly underestimating their problems. Again, undershoring this heterogeneity uh, concept. So we just uh, concluded then a discussion of degree of hearing loss. We'll move now to slide set uh, uh, part three to uh, contemplate uh, type configuration and symmetry.